websites. Even if you're just wanting to learn how to create an application for the iPhone, it's still good knowledge to learn how to create a website itself as I'm learning in my own personal project. So bring in Hacksaw Academy. With 11 projects to choose from and 20 hours of content and more content being added monthly using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's a great place to start learning how to create your own websites. Projects such as the Responsive Design Project as well as the Pretty Forms Project. I follow those projects and they're great. And the best part is you don't need extra software, everything is done right inside of the website itself. So if you want to join Hacksaw Academy with over 5,000 other students, at $25 a month you can go ahead and give Hacksaw Academy a try but if you want to give it a try, there is a 14-day free trial in the description down below, which you can go ahead and test it out yourself. Anyway, big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. On to the tutorial. How's it going everybody? Jared here, and today we're going to be delving into how to use UIKit Dynamics. So if you don't know what UIKit Dynamics is, let me just look. So UIKit Dynamics, as described by Apple, is how to create fluid and rich interactions between you and buttons and stuff like that inside of your application. Essentially, it's just a way to make your app a little bit better looking when it comes to terms of interaction. So when you click on something, something pops. It just makes it look a lot better. Now we're going to be exploring one aspect of UIKit Dynamics today, which is called the snap behavior. So essentially what this does, it allows it to snap to a place inside of the view. And that's what we're going to be working on today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Xcode 8. I am using Xcode 8 Beta 6 right now. And in terms of Xcode 7 and Swift 2, there's not that many changes, but I'll go over the little changes that there are. So let's go ahead, create a new Xcode project. This will be a single view application. Go ahead, click next. I'm going to go ahead and call my project name Snap and then click next and let's go ahead and create. And now let's go ahead and start programming this. So let's go ahead to go over here to our main.storyboard. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add three buttons. So I'm gonna have button one and button two and button three. Now they're all gonna be based off of this first button. So I'm just gonna take this first button, drag it out to the edge right there. And then we're gonna take this button and just copy it so we hit that we have three buttons in total. I'm gonna have one button in which when you press it, it's gonna move up to the top of the screen, another button that moves to the location of your press, and then this button's just gonna be normal. So let's go ahead and let's continue on with our application. So I'm just positioning all my buttons properly, and you can position them to your liking, but that is how I want them. So now with these buttons, I'm also going to add some background color, that way we can see exactly what's going on. So I'm taking this background right here, and just add a nice color to the background of it. So there you have it, those are my three buttons. And now let's go ahead and connect that to our viewcontroller.swift file. So the way we do this is by going over here, we're gonna right click or control click and drag from our button over to our viewcontroller.swift. And inside of here, I'm gonna set the connection type to an outlet collection right here. So this is going to collect all of our buttons into this one simple variable, which is very nice. And it's just simple and cleaner to use it this way. But you can, of course, if you wanna affect each of the buttons individually, you can of course have each of them as a separate outlet if you want. But this is how I'm going to be working with it in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and continue on our outlet collection. I'm just going to go ahead and call mine the buttons. Now go ahead, connect. And now another thing I want to do is make sure that these buttons are properly placed on all the different screen sizes. So we're going to go ahead, right click or control click and drag from this button over to our view right over here. And we want to hold shift and I'm going to select leading space, trailing space and we're gonna center it vertically in the container. And that should do it. So now we have it, so that button is centered. Now we wanna base these other button positions off of that. So we're gonna go ahead, right click or control click and drag from this button to this button, add some vertical spacing, do the same with the one down here. And then we also wanna add some trailing space, leading space, and do that with the other one up here like so. So now we have all of these buttons perfectly planned out with all the constraints. Now these buttons, when you actually build and run it, the constraints do not stay. Now the way we fix this is by going over here and we say self.view.layout if needed. And that's going to keep it so the constraints that we use on this screen are perfectly placed when we actually run the application. So that's very crucial to your application. So make sure that you have self.view.layout if needed. Uh, thank you to the person that mentioned that in the comments. But now on to actually animating things. So in order to animate things, we're gonna go ahead, go down here and create our new snap behavior. So this is going to be my variable snap colon. I'm gonna set this equal to a UI snap behavior exclamation point. 
And then with this, we want to apply this to an animator. So we also want to create another variable. And this is going to be my animator colon, and then this will be my UI dynamic animator, uh, like so. So now we have our animator is a UI dynamic animator. And this all makes sense in just a second as we actually put that snap behavior onto each of these projects. Now, right now, we want to assign our animator right here to our views. Now, the way we do this is by going out down here into our view did load, and we're going to say animator will be equal to a UI dynamic animator, open parentheses, and then this will be the one that says reference view right here. And our reference view is, of course, going to just be our self dot view, like so. So this animator is essentially what's going to host all of these behaviors that we're adding on here. So we have the snap behavior, and there's also a bunch of other behaviors that we'll go into in other videos. But right now we just have the snap behavior. So let's go ahead and manage this on all of our buttons. Now the way we do this is I'm going to go ahead and circulate through all these buttons that we have. So we're going to say for our button, this is creating a new variable that will be equal to each of these single buttons that's inside of here. So we're going to say for button in our capital B buttons. So we're calling this one right up here. We're grabbing each of the buttons out of that buttons uh, array. And we're going to go ahead and say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And we're going to be circulating through all of those buttons. Now, the first thing I want to do animation wise is when our view loads, I want them to just go onto the screen and that's how it's going to be. So they're just going to go right onto the screen and snap into place. Now the way we do this is I want to first get where their original positions are, where they're at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable called my original uh, position and I'm going to set this equal to my button dot center. So we're grabbing the position of this button dot center and we're setting it to that variable. Now we're calling this inside of the for statement that we're recreating this variable every time and it makes sense when it comes to actually moving things. So we want to keep that in mind. Now we have that original position so let's go ahead and change the button.center. So we can go ahead and say our button.center will be equal to and I'm just going to go ahead and set this equal to a CG point open parentheses X value. I want this to be centered inside of the scene still so I'm going to go ahead and set my X value to myself dot view dot frame dot width divided by two. And then with our Y value here, I just want it to be right above the scene. So what I'm going to do here is just set this equal to my negative, my button dot frame dot height, like so. And that should make it so that it's right above the scene as it builds and runs. So it's just going to go right up here and then move down to the original position. So now let's go ahead and apply that to our snap behavior. So let's go ahead and say our snap will be equal to a UI snap behavior, open parentheses, and we have our item and our snap too. So our item here is what do we want to move? Well, we're of course going to be moving our button and we're going to move to the position of our original position that we created right up here. And there you have it. So now we created that snap behavior. And now the next thing we need to do is just add that onto our animator. So we're gonna say behavior, and we're going to add the behavior of our snap behavior that we just created right there. And now let's go ahead, build and run this and check out how our loading is looking. Now I'm building and running this on my iPhone right here because if you run this in your simulator, things are pretty choppy, at least for me. So I'm running this on my iPhone and let's check it out how everything is. And there you have it. So now is this build and run, as you can see. Oh, and it looks like this is the only button that's actually added inside of our button variable. So let's go ahead and fix that by going over here to our main.storyboard. And what we're gonna do is add those other buttons inside of our project. Whoops. And the reason only one button is moving because I only added one of these buttons inside of there. So just go ahead and add those other two. If you haven't already, I missed out on that. So go ahead and just add those other buttons into your buttons IB outlet right here. And you should be able to just click and drag and it adds them into that UI button collection. And now let's go ahead, build and run this and let's check it out. And now, as you can see, these buttons came in and this first button landed in the proper place, but these other two buttons, they just fell off the bandwagon. Now, the way we fix this is by going down here to our viewcontroller.swift, we have the snap behavior. And the way that I found out to fix this is by going say snap, and then we're gonna go ahead and set our damping 
equal to 0.2. Now you can change this to other variables and see how they work, but 0.2 has been working for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 0.2. And essentially what damping does, it, it, allowed, it adds some more bounciness to your application. So if it's closer to one, there's less bounce, and if it's closer to zero, there's more bounce. That's just how things work. So I set it to 0.2, and this is how that looks. So now they all pop into place, and they all just swing in there with little to no damping. And you can, of course, change that to whatever you want. But either way, there you have it. So that's how you would load your buttons in. Now the next thing I want to do is when I click on this button right here, it's going to move up to the top of the screen in a snap behavior. And then I'm also going to make this second button right here move to wherever I touch in the view. So let's go ahead and fix that by going over here to our main.storyboard. Now for some reason my buttons aren't coming up properly. Uh, this is probably because we're just in beta. But either way, we know which buttons we're going to be affecting, so it doesn't really matter at the moment. But either way, let's go ahead, right click or control click and drag from our top button over to our viewcontroller.swift and we're just going to go ahead and insert an action. Now for this action name I'm just going to go ahead and call mine button one is pressed. So button one pressed and then go ahead and connect that. And there you have it. So now that is created and connected to our first button. Now for the second button right here, we're going to be affecting that in a different way. So we don't need to add an action. So let's go ahead, close up our assistant editor and head right into our view controller.swift. So inside of this button one pressed right here, we want to affect the button that we, that is just pressed. So we're going to go ahead and take this. We have the sender value right here and essentially that sender value is your button. So you can go ahead and take that sender and uh, position it and move it accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and what you wanna do first in order to animate this properly, otherwise things just don't work properly, you need to say animator.removeAllBehaviors. And that's what's going to allow you to add this next behavior on there. So you can go ahead and say my snap will be equal to a UI snap behavior, open parentheses, item and snap to. So with my snap to, I'm gonna snap it to a specific position. So I'm gonna go up here, create a new variable called my position, and I shall set this equal to a CG point, open parentheses. With the X value, I still want this to be in the middle, but you can of course change that to whatever you want. I'm gonna set this equal to myself dot view dot frame dot width divided by two. And that should set that all up properly. Now with our Y value here, I want this to be just at the top of the screen. So the way I'm gonna do this is set this equal to my sender dot frame dot height, like so. Now with the Y value here, I just want this to be up at the top of the screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my Y value equal to my sender dot frame dot height. So we're just taking that button frame and moving it to the relative position. And what this does is it just puts it right up at the top of the screen a little bit below. And you'll see exactly. If you want to have a specific Y value, you might set this equal to something like 50 or something like that. Either way works. I want this to be sender.frame.height so that it's just at the top of the screen depending on the button. Now let's go ahead and continue on. And we have snap it will be equal to a UI snap behavior with the item. And of course, we're going to be affecting our sender. This is the button that we just clicked. And then the snap to, we're going to snap to the position. And that's the one right here. And that's how everything should work. And also, it doesn't really know that the sender is going to be something that we can move. So we want to go ahead and say, as a UI button, like so. So now we're converting this to a UI button and just making sure that it knows that it's a UI button and that it can actually move it. Now we need to go ahead and add this behavior onto our animator. So first off, I'm just going to say my snap dot damping will be equal to 0. Uh, two. And of course you can change that to more or less if you want. I might try 0 0.8 just to see what that does. We might have to change that. But let's go ahead and say my animator dot add behavior. And now we're going to add the behavior of my snap that I just created right there. Now let's go ahead, build and run this and check out what it does. So now we have it. So they're all bouncing in. Let's click on the button at here. And as you can see with damping, things got a little bit weird, but it did finally snap into the position. Again, you can of course change that damping to 0 0.2. And let's check out how that is. I think I'm gonna like it a little bit more. <laughs> so there you have it, they load on the screen. Let's go ahead, click our top button, and it just moves up to the top of the screen. Now with this other button right here, I want this to move to my location within the scene. So the way we do this is by going over here to our project, and we're gonna go ahead and say touches began. And with this, as you can see, there's a variable right here called my touches, and this is equal to a set 
of my UI touch. So this is essentially an array of all my touches that are going on. So with this, we can go ahead and access a specific touch out of that touch and put it to the location of that touch. So we can say for our touch in touches, so we're just going inside of each of these, just like we did with up here for buttons and buttons, we're going for touch in touches. We can go ahead and say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And now we want to get the location of that specific touch. So we're going to say let my location equal to my touch dot location in. And with this, we have it location in view. Now for Swift 2, this would be location in view, but as you can see, this shortened it a little bit, which I think is quite nice. But we can go ahead and say my touch dot location in, and this is going to, of course, the view will be my self dot view. And that's how we're going to have it. And now we can go ahead and go back up here to my button one pressed. And I'm just going to take everything that we have right there and just move that accordingly. Now I want to grab a specific button out of this. Now the way we do that is I want to grab my button. So I'm going to say let my button equal to my buttons. And it's important to keep in mind, and we want to grab a specific button. This is, of course, going to be my second button, but this is an array, so arrays start at zero. So we have three objects, but it starts at zero. So it's not one, two, three, it's zero, one, and two. So we want to go ahead and say open bracket, close bracket, and we're grabbing that specific button out of there, which, of course, the second button will be equal to one. So just go ahead, take that, and now we have this button right here. And now with the snap equal to a UI snap behavior with the item, we're going to go ahead and delete that item that's inside of there. And we're setting that equal to our button that we created right up here. And then with our snap to position, we're of course just going to set this equal to our location. And there you have it. So now we have it moving it to wherever we press. Now also if you want to get fancy with this, you can say touches uh, moved. And then you can just basically take everything that's inside of there, copy, paste that right in there. And now let's go ahead and build and run this. And now if you were to click and also move your finger, it moves to that location. So let's go ahead and check it out. And here you have it. So it loads up and now Siri keeps coming on because I, for some reason it thinks I say, hey Siri. And here you have it. Now it keeps, <laughs> what the heck? And here you have it. So I'm going to go ahead, click on this first button right here and it moves up to the top. And now I'm going to click anywhere on the screen and it's just gonna move right to that location. Now, as you can see, we're getting this error where it just stops animating after a lot of presses. And the way we fix this is by going down here. And as you can see, this animator dot remove all behaviors. I called this up here, and this is for a very specific reason, other because we get that error if we don't do this. So we wanna make sure we copy that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that right down here instead of my touches began, and also my touches moved. And now let's go ahead, check that out, and let's see what happens. And here you have it, so now it loads up, everything pops into the screen. Let's go ahead and click on that first button, moves up to the top, and now we can click anywhere on the screen, and it moves to that location. And it also moves to wherever we, uh, d depending on where we click and drag as well. So there you have it, that is how you use the UI snap behavior inside of UIKit Dynamics. And there you have it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you have any other recommendations for UIKit Dynamics that you would like to see in the future, be sure to leave that in the comment section down below. Also, just leave any tutorial suggestions down below. Anyway, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. I keep doing that. In the next one. In the next one. In the next one. Bye. <laughs>